is going on everybody? My name is Payne and welcome back to another Studio Ghibli review video. Ever since I started making these Ghibli reviews, I have either been praising the movie with what it had and what it gave to the viewer, or say why it may be overlooked for one reason or another. And that's because for anyone who knows these films or grew up with these films, I wanted to take you guys back to when you saw that film for the first time and when it finally hit you that you were watching something very special and watching something that will probably stick with you for the rest of your life. Because I believe it's safe to say that considering how many Ghibli films there are and the amount of people that watched it, there's always that one Studio Ghibli film that everyone grew up with. But what if I told you that there was a Ghibli film that not only wasn't really considered in anybody's list of top Ghibli films, but was barely even looked at at all. A movie that only a very, very, very small minority of people know about, and until recently, had faded into obscurity. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, I did say the same thing, uh, or very similar to it when I talked about uh, Only Yesterday fairly recently, but what makes this film even more distant towards even hardcore Studio Ghibli fans was that this film wasn't directed by either Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahata, being the first Ghibli film to, ha to have somebody else direct it. So to give this film the attention it deserves and pretty questionable time to do it considering it's been a couple years, uh, here is the one, the only, Ocean Waves. Ocean Waves, aka I Can Hear the Sea, is a romance slice of life made for TV movie that was directed by Tonomi Mochizuki, written by Kaori Nakamura, and was made by Studio Ghibli. It was released in Japan for Nippon TV on May 5th, 1993, and it was released by G Kids back in 2016, and is an hour and 12 minutes long, or 72 minutes long, the shortest Ghibli film to date. The film is based off a novel made by the late Saeko Himuro in 1990, and when the studio Ghibli got the rights for it, the higher-ups, specifically Miyazaki, Isao Takahata, and Toshio Suzuki, the three people who founded Studio Ghibli, decided to give this task to the younger staff members of Ghibli as a way for them to make a movie with a small budget. But unfortunately, when the movie was over, not only did they make the movie over budget, they also went ahead of schedule. They took way too long making the film. As for the director, Studio Ghibli hired 34-year-old Tomomi Mochizuki to look over the young production staff, but while he was hired to take on the directing role for the adaptation of a novel that he's been publicly praising since it came out, though it's been said that that wasn't the reason why he was picked as the director, which I highly doubt. He was also in the middle of directing and writing a six episode OVA known as Here Is Greenwood and ended up working on both projects at the same time, leading him to be hospitalized due to stress from overworking and from that stress ended up having a stomach disease after both projects ended. That's how much he worked. He ended up giving himself a freaking stomach infection. As for the anime, it's told in a flashback sparked by the main character Taku after he sees a woman at the other end of a railway track in Tokyo before she's being taken away by the oncoming crowd of people at the first scene of the movie. The flashback goes back to when Taku was in high school as he and his best friend Yutaka are starting another year in high school in Kochi when they meet a transfer student from Tokyo named Rakako and suddenly their friendship is challenged in a love triangle. But after Taku and Rikako take an emergency trip to Tokyo, rumors spread around the school that they are now dating, making Taku stressed out and frustrated and Rikaku the most hated girl in school. After a couple more confrontations regarding the matter involving all three, they end up not talking to each other for the rest of the year. Fast forward to the present day where, where Taku lands in Kochi from Tokyo and arrives at a class reunion and finds out that Rikaku is attending university in Kochi and that she was returning from Tokyo while the reunion was going on, making Taku realize that the woman she saw in Tokyo was Rikako, and the movie ends with Taku catching up to Rikako on the other end of yet another railway station, this time catching up with her, confessing his love to her. Now, I know what you're thinking, and no, it's not the end of the world. Cats are not friends with dogs. The majority of anime fans think Raftalia is best girl in Rising of the Shield Hero, even though I absolutely disagree with that. And the Anime Awards is still an eye-bleaching, memory-erasing cringe fest. But no, really, this is a Studio Ghibli film that, like I said earlier in the video, is a slice-of-life film. But it doesn't mean that this film is anything like what we've seen in the past decade when it comes to slice-of-life anime. It came out way before a time where cute girls doing cute things equaled anime. Like the shows that I've reviewed in the past, Azumanga Nayo and Nichijou are two prime examples of that. 
Instead, this is a movie about how people think and change over a certain period of time and after certain situations and scenarios approach them and the way it doesn't hold back by showing the viewers the real life aspects of a very familiar story. Very much like only yesterday, except the thoughts that we get out of it are different. Instead of it being a story where it makes you think back to mistakes that you've made in the past, it's about finding ways to resolve your mistakes in the present, and the film shows that process very well, and it's one of the many reasons why this film has, just like other Ghibli films, a sense of realism to it. The animation flowed pretty well, the facial expressions conveyed the characters' emotions very well, and while it's said that the film went over budget, it doesn't really look like that. Studio Ghibli never showed any evidence visually of that, and the only thing that I could say is it's not necessarily a negative, but it's definitely something out of the norm, especially for me, someone who not only is reviewing all the Ghibli films, but at one point is binge watching all these Ghibli films, is that while the animation is very well done, when you compare it to other Ghibli films, it comes off as bland and that some of the characters look the same, something that you don't really see that often uh, when you watch Ghibli films again from Takahata or Miyazaki, but again, it really just depends on how you look at it. If you compare it to the animation of other Ghibli films, it, you're not going to be satisfied. But if you are a fan of other 90s anime films, you're going to have a pretty good time watching this. It's still really good. It's just when you compare it to like Porco Rosso or a film that I'm probably going to review in the next two Ghibli review videos, Whisper of the Heart, another movie that's actually very similar to Ocean Waves. Uh, then it just looks completely different. The music, albeit once again not done by Joe Hisaishi, is still really good, even though that it was calm and fitting for basically every scene of the film. The soundtrack, to me, ended up becoming one of those soundtracks where it was just really good listening to them when they were put in the movie. It wasn't one of those soundtracks where it, you can listen to it on its own and be satisfied. It wasn't one of those things. But I can't really say anything bad about it. It's, it's pretty good. Same thing with the voice acting, too. They're both like right in the middle for me like they're not really good but I don't see any reason why to say that they're bad because they're not bad they're, they're right in the middle perfectly fine nothing wrong with it now this is where I get into the characters in this movie specifically the big three of Taku, Yutaka, and Rikako I will start off with Taku who to me comes off as a typical nice guy without expecting anything in return and is sometimes an honest guy for honest sake sometimes just says the most blunt thing possible in the worst situation. While Rikako, on the other hand, comes off as a spoiled child who cheated both Taku and Yutaka out of their money to go back to Tokyo and blamed her mother for the reason why she left Tokyo in the first place to go to Kochi, which makes this story work because this is a common case of when opposites attract, and over the course of the movie, both Taku and Rikako learn from each other and therefore result in great development from both sides and a good understanding of both their personalities. Which brings me to my only issue with the characterization, and that is regarding Yutaka, the third character. Because that he doesn't show up for about half the movie, or basically the meat of it where the important shit happens, there's not that really that much development that comes out of him, or nothing really stands out. And when it does, it's in the second half of the film when most of the stuff's already been revealed. And I think that if he was shown in a couple of more scenes, or if the movie was... You know, I said the movie was 72 minutes long. If it was stretched out to like probably 20 more minutes to give him more time for development, I think the movie would have been way better. But apart from that, I really enjoyed this film. As someone who's been binge watching nonsensical fantasies that capture the imagination of the majority of people who watch them, this is the perfect film for anyone who likes not just films like Only Yesterday, but anything that's really down to earth. It's for anyone who likes romance with a more convincing and genuine feel to it. And with that, I'm going to give Ocean Waves an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this review video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more videos in the future, hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below. If you want to see any videos that I've made in the past, there will be some on the screen in the description or down on my channel. And with that, my name is Payne. I'll see you in the next video.